I want to talk about Reactive Angular. What is Reactive Angular in the sense of a component architecture? So there's a couple of principles that we can kind of use as a guideline when we come to building our Angular component trees. Now, typically, we'll start off with a container component, which you can see in our project, we have the containers folder. And everything else, which we consider a presentational component, just sits in a generic components folder. So we're going to kind of explore some of the characteristics of the difference between the two so we can start to think about how the store and the architecture of NGRX store and the effects all fit in to our container and presentational components. The interesting thing is a container component is aware of the store. The container component dispatches actions. The container component also reads data from the store. So the container is the communicator with our store in this case, and we just simply render presentational components which are not aware of the store. We don't inject the store. You can, obviously, if you like, if you have a specific use case, then that's fine to inject the store. But ideally, we should be thinking about containers and presentational components and whether something is aware of the store or not aware of the store. So the interesting thing between a presentational component is when we want to get something out of a component, we then emit an output via Angular's event emitter. So that's how we get data out of a presentational component. Whereas if we look at the container, we can see that we dispatch an action. We still want to get data out of the component, but it's now changed from perhaps injecting a service to, okay, the data is now leaving the component via an action. Now, a presentational component reads the data via an input. And if we have a look at the container, it reads the data from the store. We then use something like the async pipe to then pass it down as just pure data as an input to a presentational component. So let's have a look at how these actually stack up and look like in a real world scenario. Here's an example where we have the store and we've got the orange arrows which represent an output and the gray arrows which represent an input. So we can see immediately at the top, our store is giving our container component an input of the data, and it's up to us what data we ask for from the store. And this is where things like NGRX selectors come into play. I've added this separation block where we've got this dotted gray line around the presentational components. So at this point, I'm assuming that any presentational component has zero knowledge that the store even exists. It's only given its data via our container components. So we pass things down to presentational as an input. And again, we can then emit them as an output. So this is pretty much what we need to think about. To get data into a container, we use a select. To get data into a presentational component, we use an input. To get data out of the presentational component, we use an output. And to get data back to our store, back to the reducer, or an effect, we then use a store dispatch. So that's the data flow and how things communicate. And you can see here that we, we don't even have a service. Our component doesn't care how it gets its data. That's the whole role of using a store. Now, because when we use something like a store select, this actually gets given to us as an observable. So you can think about Angular at this point as one big reactive system. So that's a nice little primer to thinking about our architecture in a more structured and thinking about the separation of our concerns.